Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix. I decided to skip on what I'm playing this week to talk about a game that has me really perplexed. And that is Creature in the Well. That is the game that you're seeing here right now. This game has such a brilliant and novel concept in the way that you play it, but it has a couple of huge flaws that hold it back. And I kind of wanted to talk about my thoughts on this game because for the amount of time I've played it, I've played it for a couple of hours, I have really enjoyed the whole concept behind the game. Basically, it is a action-based game, overhead type perspective like you see here. But you see there's these little balls that I'm hitting around and kind of you know, navigating through the arenas, trying to hit various targets with these balls. And what makes that really interesting is that this game isn't just a straight up action game. It basically plays like an action game meets like a pinball or pool game or something like that. It's a really interesting idea and not like anything I've seen before. Um, so on that regard, in terms of how unique and yet novel and brilliant the idea of the gameplay is, phenomenal phenomenal right there that alone at least if the game is designed under normal circumstances should make it a really good game and it gave me that vibe at first but I wanted to describe some problems that I have with this game uh, first of all it is cryptic of course uh, a lot of indie games nowadays seem to take a formula of making the gameplay very cryptic, making the player have to learn the game on their own. Um, basically the same type of formula we've seen for games for many years, although it's recently gotten a revival thanks to the Souls series, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and so on. Um, and for a very good reason, because prior to those games coming out, games were getting increasingly more linear uh, basically telling you where to go, what to do, in order to beat the game. And obviously that is fine in some cases, you know. Some games do need to have that kind of treatment, you know. So sometimes that's just what people want. But at the same time, it became a severe problem in the gaming industry, which is how kind of hand-holding and uh, force-fed the games were becoming you know, it was definitely a major problem. And the Souls type games addressed that problem brilliantly and gave people something that really can add a lot of depth to the play experience. And this game definitely takes that tenet very well, but it gets a little too cryptic. So whenever you first start the game, it does describe the basic mechanics of what to do and how to play the game. However, it does so without introducing any type of rule set that you're going to be adhering to for the rest of the game. Namely, for example, there is absolutely no challenge, no kind of challenge to overcome in the tutorial. It just basically all it does is just tell you how to play the game and everything else you have to figure out on your own. And I mean everything else. Um, so, it's, like I said, it explains the mechanics. Like, let's say, for example, uh, you use the X and Y buttons as your main action buttons. You also use A, of course, to dodge and things like that. Those are pretty much, for the most part, the buttons you'll be using through the most of the game. But the game doesn't do any type of job on explaining how you utilize those buttons and how to utilize them as effectively as you can, which is a major problem. And the reason why that's a major problem is due to the fact that there is so much trial and error with this game. Now, by the looks of it to someone that's not informed, this game seems like a pretty standard action game that is going to use, um, you know, this new mechanic where you hit the ball around at different angles and things like that. And that is somewhat the case, but this game really is not an action game. This game is a physics game. Uh, you have to have a very high level understanding of physics. Now, right now, for example, you might see like a little bit of a red trail whenever I move the thing around. You don't even get that to begin the game. 
As a matter of fact, I had to unlock a secret room which gave me an item that gave me that ability. So prior to that, I didn't have any way to actually target things except for extreme precision. And that can be a very difficult concept to grasp when you're using an analog stick that has full 360 degree movement on the controller and the slightest, slightest tiny movement off is going to screw your shot up. And that means that the trial and error isn't so much just a mental thing where you just have to understand the mechanics. There is very much a problem with hand-eye coordination has to be considered as well and I totally get it you know games not not every game needs to be easy you know I totally get that but like I said they do a very poor job of really explaining it and the challenge shoots up quickly like the difficulty curve on this game is basically like a cliff <laughs> you know like I said at the very beginning the game's easy and then it just kind of shoots right up you know, it is insane just how fast you have to learn things. As a matter of fact, you see me, for example, whenever I hit the thing and then the orange ball comes back. The orange ones can hurt, hurt you, so those will actually do damage. And so obviously you don't want to hit those. Now you can use Y to hit that attack back. Now, I learned later on, no thanks again to the game, simply due to trial and error, that you can actually absorb those shots and shoot them back. You don't actually have to bat them back with perfect timing, um, which does make things a bit easier. I'm actually able to progress a little bit further in this particular boss fight that I've been stuck on for a little while. But then in the next phase of the boss fight, it just gets really crazy. Um, and I really just don't understand. Uh, this is a game that has a really brilliant concept, but it's mirrored by really bad game design choices. Uh, for example, when you die in this game, so the game's called Creature in the Well. It actually refers to this big creature that's, you know, the big hands that shoots the little fireball things that float around and things like that. That is the actual boss. And as you progress through this game, you get closer and closer to actually defeating this creature, and whenever he defeats you, of course, he picks you up, throws you out of the well. So, hence the term, creature in the well. Now, the problem here is that this game does have a checkpoint system. You can unlock checkpoints by spending your energy, which the energy is what kind of pops up when you hit targets and things like that. It's kind of like your score in a way. But it's also your currency, and it's used to unlock doors and various things like that. And like I said, it does unlock the checkpoints. But you'll notice my health is completely empty still. So the game forces you to go to a fountain to fully heal up, and then you have to go back into the dungeon before you can go into the checkpoint to fight the boss. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, and for the first few times or so that you're dealing with this, it really isn't. But then you realize that it's literally every single time you die, you have to run back from the well, run back through the town, which has nothing going on, and rinse and repeat, you know, every time. It's a very severe punishment uh, by today's standards for a game. You know, I really think it is. Um, you know, just to draw the comparisons to the Souls series, of course, you know, when you die in the Souls games, uh, you have full health again, although some of them, of course, do that curse thing where you get your max health reduced and things like that. You know, there is definitely some punishment there, but at the same time, usually they have a very good checkpoint system. They don't require you necessarily, as long as you're smart about actually using those checkpoints, you know, the campfires and things like that it actually doesn't force you to go through a bunch of monotonous and tedious things that you really don't need to do and serve no purpose other than to frustrate and annoy the player um of course you know it, it, it's kind of a problem because it adds to their whole risk reward element obviously you don't want to be in that situation so you want to get better at the game you want to get good but the game has so much trial and error that there's no choice but to frequently deal with this. 
This is not a game that the very first time you play it, you're going to be able to go through the game start to finish without dying. That's not going to happen. You know, it simply is not that kind of game. Um, I doubt, like, the most skilled speedrunner in the world could do something like that on the first time they play this game. There's absolutely no way that that could happen. And that's because the game is deliberately designed to force you to learn from mistakes, you know, that you're going to make mistakes, things that you don't even realize are mistakes, and you're going to have a bad time from that. So, it's it's so frustrating, you know, I really want to like this game, but I can't. Not the way that the developer has designed it. They intentionally, it almost seems like they intentionally crippled the game. Um, and I just don't understand why. I, unless they're just intentionally like trying to make a game as hard as possible, I guess that could be what's going on. I don't think so though, because like the second boss fight, this was the one I'm on right now. This boss fight is really crazy, but the first boss fight was actually kind of easy. You know, like I had some tough dungeon rooms prior to that, but the actual boss fight was kind of easy. And it didn't take me much time at all to get through it. But this second boss fight, once you get to the third segment, and I don't know if there's even more segments than that, but it starts shooting off random shots that... It, I mean, it takes a lot of dexterity, physically and mentally, to really track what's going on here. Because you'll notice that the cannons will randomly change colors, walls will just randomly pop up, and it becomes such a hectic mess. It is very, very hard to keep track of it all. Um, much less actually, like, do anything about it. You know, like, there's just so much stuff going on right now. It's crazy. Um, yeah, man, Creature in the Well. This is a game I wanted to like. This was a game I was hoping would be on what I'm playing because I was hoping to be able to make some decent progress, but it's not going to happen. So instead, we did this fun little rant. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But uh, till then, Dow Phoenix out.